Hello YouTube. Let us recall that plasma is the fourth state of matter and is uh, partially or completely ionized gas with an almost equal number of positively and negatively charged particles. Plasma is characterized by high, by the standards of normal conditions, temperature, glow, electromagnetic radiation and other signs. In nature, plasma is found in stars and interstellar space in the form of lightning, etc. Artificially created plasma is present in devices of different classes, from household lamps to thermonuclear reactors. But what about military affairs? Well, let me introduce you to the information from Russia. Um, the research of Ryabov Kirill, a Russian journalist covering military R&D, and later I will add something from a different source about China. <coughs> it is curious that plasma has been present in military affairs since the ancient times, although with certain reservations. Thus, a variety of incendiary systems and means from the ignited eras of antiquity to modern flamethrowers create a flame actually a low-temperature plasma. When an explosive is detonated, a flash occurs, also created by ionized gas. Various weapons based on ionized gas plasma have long been firmly entrenched in science fiction. In reality, plasma is still used only in certain forms. And we're not talking about a fantastic super weapon but about familiar effects and means. However, leading countries continue the necessary research <coughs> and work on the so-called weapons, new physical principles. Thanks to this, the situation may change in the future. In these cases, we're talking about low temperature plasma. At the same time, it has a fairly high energy and tends to transfer it to the surrounding substance which leads to fire or detonation of the latter. The result of such processes is the defeat of the target causing one or another damage. The most striking manifestation of plasma in military affairs in every sense is the flash of a nuclear thermonuclear explosion. During the fission or fusion of nuclei, colossal energy is released, affecting the parts of the warhead, the surrounding air, and the underlying surface. Under the influence of this energy, the substance goes into a gaseous state and is ionized. The resulting plasma cloud creates light radiation, one of the main damaging factors of a nuclear explosion. The radiation power is the visible range and beyond is sufficient to ignite objects at a considerable distance from the point of explosion and to cause other damage at a greater distance. It should be noted that in military affairs, plasma is present not only as a kind of means of destruction. Several decades ago, it became an additional challenge for designers of missile and aviation technology. However, later they learned to deal with this problem and attempts were also made to put a complex physical phenomenon at their service. It is well known that when an aircraft moves at high speed, its surface and the surrounding air heat up from friction against each other. During hypersonic flight, the air temperature can reach thousands of degrees, as a result of which it turns into a plasma state. As a result, the aircraft ends up in the so-called plasma cocoon which is maintained until the flight speed decreases below a certain limit. The plasma layer around the body places special demands on the aircraft design. It must withstand the expected mechanical and thermal loads. To create and manufacture such a product, a serious scientific and technological base is required, covering the fields of material science, design, aerodynamics, etc. Special requirements arise for the onboard equipment of the aircraft. The plasma shell shields radio signals, 
causing it to lose the ability to communicate with external systems and also cannot use some types of navigations and guidance. In this regard, autonomous equipment with high performance is required. However, there are fragmentary reports on solutions to isolation problems. Modern hypersonic aircraft can supposedly communicate and perform homing. The plasma cocoon simplifies the detection and tracking of the aircraft. The cloud of ionized gas, gas around the hypersonic object can be detected by a radar or infrared surveillance equipment. In addition, the aircraft leaves a trail of plasma and hot air, which can also be detected by the appropriate equipment. However, the ease of detection of a flying missile or warhead does not guarantee its timely interception. High flight speed will sharply reduce the permissible reaction time for anti-missile defense. As far as we know, leading countries have studied the possibility of using a plasma cocoon to their advantage. In particular, rumors are circulating about the development of special plasma generators that should impair the visibility of airplanes or other aircraft. Whether such projects actually exist, how far they have progressed, and on what principles they work is unknown. What about space technology? Since the late 1950s, leading countries have been working on creating a rocket engine using ionized gas. In the early 1960s, the first results of these programs were tested on Earth, and by the middle of the decade, tests began in outer space. Well, and then future comes, and the so-called plasma engines have become quite widespread and are still used today. The concept of such a propulsion system is quite simple. Using a set of magnets and electrical devices, the gaseous working fluid is heated and ionized. Already in the 1960s, it was possible to obtain uh, plasma temperatures of in the order of 30 uh, degrees K and its outflow speed of 15 kilometers a second. The plasma engine is inferior to other installations in terms of maximum thrust, but outperforms them in terms of operating time. Plasma engines and electric propulsion systems in general are widely used on a variety of spacecraft, including on military equipment. Such products are most effective as shunting engines, which require um, high precision and limited thrust. An interesting option for using plasma was proposed in the United States in the past. It was proposed to obtain it using a laser of sufficient power and use it to inflict limited and controlled damage on the target. Subsequently, this idea was implemented in several experimental projects that were brought to testing. However, none of these projects, according to the Russians, have progressed beyond tests in the laboratory or in the test site. About the early stages of laser development weapons, various methods of influencing the target were explored, in particular the possibility of damaging objects with short powerful pulses were studied. Such studies have shown that with certain combinations of beam power, pulse duration, and target material, the outer layer of the target literally evaporates, including with plasma formation and corresponding additional effects. They decided to study this principle in the context of non-lethal systems. During the 1990s and early 2000s, several organizations successfully developed products Pulsed Impulsive Kill Laser, Pickle, Pulse Chemical Laser, PCL, Pulse Energy Projectile, PEP, <coughs> etc., with different technical features and general principles of operation. In the 2010s, other products appeared, uh, the newest of which were the Scopples, Scalable Compact, compact Ultra Short Pulse Laser System Complex. Operating the principle of pickle, PCL, etc. systems was simple enough. The laser beam or beams had to be focused directly in front of the target. 
A short high power pulse would ionize the air at the focal point and turn it into plasma. The resulting cloud of gas could affect a person or other object. Direct injury and damage were virtually excluded, but electromagnetic radiation from the plasma should have created severe pain. All projects used the same operating principle, which varied slightly based on the results of the tests. In addition, the, in addition, the products uh, differed in the types and parameters of the lasers used. In particular, in later projects, they found the optimal wavelength and power that give the desired effect and reduce the risk to the health of the target person. However, such systems have been criticized from a humanistic point of view, and by now, work has effectively stopped, as far as we know. Thus, plasma has long been widely used in military affairs, but only in its individual manifestations. First of all, it is used in the form of fire caused by the simplest incendiary ammunition or the light radiation of a nuclear explosion. In addition, plasma rocket engines for space technology have existed and have been used for several decades. Then weapons began to face the problem of the plasma cocoon, <coughs> which places special design requirements. In general, the topic of ionized plasma gas has been well studied, and there are various ideas and developments for its use in the military sphere. On their basis, various designs of systems of one kind or another with good Theoretical potential are being developed. However, promising weapons based on the so-called new physical principles, for one reason or another, it have yet not gone beyond the boundaries of laboratories and test sites. Time will tell how soon and how the situation will be changed. Um, now... I want to tell you something, but I also read an interesting report in the Russian media a few years ago about the Chinese R&D in this field. The Chinese military was testing an ulterior mount on a magnetized plasma. The weapon is capable of firing hypervelocity projectiles at speeds exceeding Mach 6. That's six times the speed of sound, according to Chinese media. A gun of this power and range is likely to be a huge advantage on the battlefield. Specialists from the Academy of the Armed Forces of the Chinese Army filed a patent for a new generation of weapons with the National Intellectual Property Administration of China back in 2015. The patent explains how magnetized plasma could theoretically enhance the Army's artillery power. According to the white papers, during a salvo, the enormous amount of heat and pressure inside the barrel ionizes some of the gas, turning it into plasma and forming a thin protective magnetized plasma shell along the inner wall of the barrel. The projectile speed when fired is 6 Mach numbers. The developers believe that plasma will reduce friction providing thermal insulation and thus expanding the power and range of the artillery gun. And most importantly, without compromising the structural integrity of the gun and extending the service life of the gun. By the way, let me bring this up. A tokamak is a device which uses a powerful magnetic field generated by external magnets to confine to confine plasma in the shape of an axially symmetrical torus. The tokamak is one of several types of magnetic confinement devices being developed to produce controlled thermonuclear fusion power. Magnetized plasma sounds like something out of science fiction, but China is confident that this technology, after modification, can be easily installed on tanks and self-propelled guns. According to estimates, it will increase the range of a conventional 155mm self-propelled howitzer from 30-50 to 100 kilometers. This will help to easily destroy 
enemy defenses in strategic areas with difficult access. It must be said that perhaps these rumors are not empty words. Indirect evidence that China is indeed capable of creating such a weapon may be related to their success in the field of thermonuclear fusion. Since in November of 2018, the Chinese tokamak was able to heat plasma to 100 million degrees, which is six times more than the temperature of the sun. Using the experimental advanced superconducting tokamak east, which is called China's artificial sun, physicists were able to heat plasma to 100 million degrees Celsius. Again, six times higher than the temperature of the core of our star and achieve a heating power of 10 MW. As part of this experiment, scientists obtained indicators approaching the physical conditions necessary for the operation of a thermonuclear fusion reactor in a stable mode. In addition, the Chinese announced the development of a military and civilian spacecraft with nuclear and conventional power plants. Keep an eye on China. Much is happening there, and uh, the R&D there is tremendous. That's what I wanted to let you know today. And I'll bring you more interesting information from the fields of uh, new science and its application in the world of the military, around the world, so to say. Thank you for your attention to my work. If you can support my research, please do so through the links you'll find in the description to this channel. Please like my videos. Please subscribe to my channel.